quit smoking over the summer, then started again this morning. I feel much better. My man. How you doing, bro? <laughs> Tiny, bro. I'm good. How are you? See you. Welcome back. Good. Welcome back. Thank you. You can't fire me. I quit. Think you can replace me with some other guy? Go ahead. It won't be the same. You may think I'm losing, but I'm not. I'm, anyway, you get the idea. Anger management is Charlie's baby. It is, yeah. That means I have six kids now. <laughs> uh, Charlie was at a place where, you know, what he told me when we sat down and talked, I said, what do you really want to accomplish with this? You've done a lot. And he said, I don't want my last show the way that ended to be my legacy. I want to do something that ends well. I was involved from, from, from its, uh, its genesis. And as soon as I heard the idea, um, it just it made sense. I got it. Hey, 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 hey. I thought it would be a good way to do you know, something that merged both his private life and his work life as an anger management therapist. And that's how it started. Before I went back to school and became a therapist, I was an angry, out of control ball player. You need to watch this. By the time I started to work with Charlie, he'd already pretty much pulled himself together from whatever had gone down at that point. And he was already able to make jokes about it and, and able to look back upon it. So he was really aware that he went through something and it was a difficult time, but he came out of it with the instinct to make amends, to clean up the mess, and to do great work beyond that and show everyone that that, that was an episode in his life and not his life. <laughs> I don't feel guilty about my own life. I don't have any regrets. Um, any, 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 any problems I've caused, I usually clean up the mess and, and then keep moving. You just pay it, you know, just pay people off and apologize and keep going. Not with every situation. And I just wanted to play a guy that, uh, that was sort of about um, atonement, about uh, redemption a little bit, um, amends, things like that. Stuff I can't relate to. And. Uh, and, you know, Bruce has, has crafted this thing in a way that, um, that everybody's got a voice, but no one's is, is, is too loud. That, I just wrote that. That was good. Everyone's got a voice, but no one's is too loud. Write that down, Bob Marin. Sorry. Okay, we're cool, man. I just, you know, recognize his genius. The point is, anger took away something that I really loved. And I'm here to try to keep that from happening to you. He's back, you know, and he's doing something he's always been good at. And he had like maybe a couple months off where he did some stuff. That guy's back. And people love him. He's good at what he does. You know, in a very vanity and a very youth obsessed uh, business I work in, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't base how I feel on how I'm, how I'm perceived or how I'm judged. I know how I feel in here. And then if it, if it, if it translates, that's, that, that's all fine and well. And usually it does. I mean, you watch this show because of Charlie. He's very much a part of every aspect of it. He wants to kind of make this the capper for his career. It's uh, and tons of laughs and tons of really interesting characters and really, really smart and funny stories. Listen, kiddo, everything is going to be fine. When the time comes, you're going to be totally prepared to do what you need to do. You really think so? Nah, it's a load of crap my dad laid on me. <laughs> this is a real different Charlie because he's got, he's never, I don't think he's played where he had a kid before, he's got an ex-wife to deal with. He's a much more dimensional Charlie than he was on his prior shows. He's got a lot more complicated things going on in his head. So this is kind of the adult version of Charlie and I think it's more interesting for him to play that. I can relate to, to, to some of the challenges that this, this guy has, but I hate actors that talk about this shit like it's all like about their, their craft and the chance that. Sitcom, sorry. It's a freaking sitcom. I mean, just stand and enjoy it. It isn't always about, like, ooh, how the characters interact. It's about the words, man. It's about the jokes. Why don't you tell us a little bit about why you're here? I have no idea. I'm not angry. My boyfriend cheated on me, so I shot him in the balls. <laughs> but he's angry. Charlie was there in, in most of the casting sessions and, and watching everybody and watching everybody carefully and being incredibly generous and, and reading with actors and making them feel comfortable, which you just don't get a star to do that very often. There is a new study that says under the right conditions that a therapist and a patient can have both a therapeutic relationship and a sexual relationship and keep both completely separate. 
Sounds like it was written by a therapist who was trying to get in somebody's pants. Selma Blair, he really liked how they worked together. And I remember she read with her legs over his legs, you know. It was like, the, the, it was just real. We were almost kind of embarrassed to be in the room because it was that kind of chemistry between them. I don't want to get into gossip, but it seemed to me that they're having something doing, going on together, you know. I took the opportunity to flirt with Charlie pretty much. There was a couple choices I made. I think I unbuckled Charlie's belt, I recall. And Bruce, like, very sweetly afterwards was like, mm, you don't, you don't, like, have to do that as a character. Like, it's not really, I was like, okay, that was a choice. I won't do that again. I didn't know where we, uh, where the scene ended and we began. A lot of people feel something when they kiss somebody and we can't have that. <laughs> All right, fine. No kissing it is. Let's get to it. <laughs> She's a dream to work with. She's hot as hell, too, I think. Hey, Charlie. I'm in your house. I'm here. She's unbelievable, yeah. Shawnee Smith, yeah, plays Jennifer. When they called me back to test, Charlie was there, and we had a basically a rehearsal day. He met with everyone before the test day, which was very nice. And we did a studio test, a network test, and here we are. We just want to ask you about a picture we saw on Facebook. Oh my God, why are you looking at my Facebook page? Because until you're 18, we own you. And we can trade you with other parents. Daniela Bobadilla, she's uh, an interesting story. She came in in red. I think I was scared to be scared. So I went in once and did it, and I felt pretty good. But I could see that they'd been talking, and then they actually brought me back in. And Shawi liked her, and he said, come out, come out here. So he took her outside into the hallway. And so I told her what they're looking for, and I said, just, just get in there and show them how it's done. And she went, okay. And it was the best thing that could have ever happened. It was just so relaxed. I felt like he was on my side, so I let go of everything. And we just did the scene, and it felt so right. And it was really impressive. And uh, that was the only coaching I gave her. Just go in there and kill it, and it's yours. Oh, it'll be nice. They called up and said, do you want to do this? I, I read it, and my daughter read it first. Said, that's a funny part. And I read it, and I said, yeah, it is. OK, let's do it. Then they got one phone call. They called me. For some reason, they settled in on me. I guess I might be old and ugly. That might be the reason. I don't know what's new. I don't know what's improved. I don't know what's for a limited time only. The days on this planet can we move on. I remember seeing Charlie at the audition. He was sitting about here, and then there was a long table of, you know, everybody from Lionsgate and FX, and, and Bruce, was, Bruce was sitting uh, next to Charlie. I guess he, he liked what I was doing. Who's the stupid therapist here? I guess that would be me. I was just so taken aback with how kind he is, and he kind of sets a precedent. Everyone is very kind, and we all like each other. I hear there's pizza in the kitchen. Do you want to go, or I could just bring you a piece? I don't want you touching my food. I'll get it myself. Great. It's a date. Derek Richardson, who plays Nolan, he was the last guy who read for the role. It was, we could not find that character, because it takes a real, it's just, it, it, he's kind of a stoner, he's a masochist, he encourages other people's anger. He was perfect for the job. It's funny, because when I auditioned for it, I didn't even know uh, really what it was. I, it was, they just were like, yeah, Charlie, she's got a new show. I went in, I uh, did my thing. Yeah, say it, get it out, get mad, yell. <laughs> what we've been doing. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> she did clean my clock in that first shot, though. Did you see that, man? It came out of nowhere, too. I had this episode where I got to slap Charlie around. Um, I felt horrible. I mean, like, saw stars. Forgot the next line, but made up something close. Ed, he's on my ass. It's like my dad's been my whole life. I've never been good enough for him. And? And? Wake up! <laughs> Boom, yeah, it was nice. It was good. I hit him, and I was like hitting him in weird places because I was so nervous I couldn't judge like where the sweet spot was that wouldn't really hurt. Wake up! <laughs> yeah, she got a good right hand, but then she, I could tell she felt bad, and so she started pulling him. And um, and I, I, no, I don't. My, one of my rules at my house is no pain in the bedroom, so I'm not into that thing, you know. I don't like hitting Charlie. Charlie and I still like each other. Maybe like in another 20 episodes, ask me again, and I'd say like yes. So excited to hit Charlie, but no. And some of them slapping the crap out of me. Okay. <laughs> the day that uh, Martin Sheen worked, if you see the episode, like he's having fun. You're a good man, Charlie Goodson. 
You took a bad situation and you made it work. I love the sheens. The more, the merrier. I don't know how to verbalize it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Martin Sheen is just like legendary. So having him just join our sitcom is, is kind of unreal. Charlie, at the last minute, he says, can a few of you get together? I want you to meet my dad because he's not used to moving so fast and he's going to come in, meet everyone, do a table read and start shooting. <laughs> Having Martin Sheen on set was a masterclass, I think, for everybody. And then seeing him interact with Charlie, uh, both on screen and off, it's just, they obviously have chemistry. Martin, oh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> and the episode with my dad was, uh, was great. As a joke, dad does Brando, and then I do dad from Apocalypse saying, you know, do, uh, do some Brando. Are you an assassin? I'm a soldier. You're neither. You're an errand boy. Sent by grocery clerks to collect the bill. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. That was just us ad at the end, and then Bruce is like, I love it, and puts it on television. Because <laughs> he's a genius, you know? But there was something about working with my old man, uh, and he's gonna be on the show now as a semi-regular. And it translated onto the, onto the screen, I thought. It was just, there was a real, there was a magical uh, connection there. You can't teach that, you can't, you can't ask someone to generate that. It's either there or it's not. You want the Sinatra kiss on the cheek? You never saw that? Let's see it. Here's Sinatra's kissing it. <laughs> Hi. Huh? Denise Richards was here. She's on the show, and that was really great because she brought her kids, and it was like, uh, you know, family affair, go team go, the way it's supposed to be, you know? Hey, that's crazy, okay? Most people I think who get divorced aren't like, yeah, I'll have my wife on the show, you know? <laughs> but he makes it work. I mean, he gets divorced, his kids are here, his wife's here, they all seem to get along. Like, I just was blown away. I just mentioned it to her, I said, how would you feel about coming in and establishing something we could then maybe have you do more episodes in the future, you know, recurring? She was all, all about it, and then uh, she came in here and did a great job. She was talking about her ex. Remember that? <laughs> Laurie, I've always said that the measure of a man is in how much he's willing to do for his ex. Oh, well, Jen's lucky. My ex can be a little difficult. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> a total maniac. <laughs> A real whack job. We get it. So things like that that you can incorporate that, that kind of poke fun at, at, at stuff that in life was, was not so much fun. I think it's, um, it's, a nice, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice homage and it's also a, it's a, it's a nice way to kind of just bury stuff or know that it just can't so many more important things to take seriously than, than crap like that, you know? That day, I remember making an exit and Denise was still on the set with Charlie and uh, their kids were sitting watching. It's really exciting. And it just goes to show that there is no one definition of family. I just said, uh, just trust me on this first part. I'll get us on the air and then, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Normally you do a pilot and then a network picks it up for 13 episodes. And if you do well, you get nine more episodes. And then after a year, they decide whether they want to pick up 13 more episodes. And that's how that normally works. It was Mark Berg's idea um, a few years ago to try this model that Tyler Perry invented. Um, I, we just thought, well, why not? The way this works is the network guarantees 10 episodes automatically. There's no pilot. So you go right into doing 10 episodes, and when they air, if they hit a certain ratings number, you get 90 more. So you get to syndication within two years. A normal sitcom would take five years before it goes into reruns. I think for him to get all these 90 episodes is to prove to people that he's still great at what he does and that people are going to want to watch it. But the good news is we're not going to, we're not going to ask him to tune in to watch a bunch of junk, of rehashed nonsense that we're just throwing under the slag heap of, 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 of television decay, you know? I wrote that just now too, Bob. That was pretty good, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the slag heap of television decay. We're not going to contribute to that. It's going to be like 1960s television, where your, your favorite show's on every week. And that's going to be really interesting to see how people react to that. I think it's going to be nice. People know what, what's going to happen on Wednesday night. So a lot of work. This is a routine that, that virtually no one has done. Yeah, I've never worked a job that's lasted for more than a month. So this is really exciting for me. Never happens. <laughs> I mean, it's really hard to get a TV show in general, OK? And then for somebody to be like, you're going to, here's 100. <laughs> Is that a real thing? I guess. <laughs> it's a really uh, 
great ride we're about to go on. It's exactly, exactly how I saw it, which doesn't happen in this business too often. We were walking around today, I said, Charlie says, have you noticed the smiles on everyone's face, how happy everyone is to be back here and have a job for the next couple of years? And that's because of you. No, no, it's everybody. A lot of shows, um, they get deep into their run and the only thing you recognize about them is, is, is the title, is the name of the show, and that's not gonna happen here. I have absolute faith. I don't hope, hopes for suckers and fools. I have absolute faith that Bruce will, um, will keep this thing, this vessel completely uh, sailing in the right direction. We're too good together to, to, to let it get screwed up. There's too much talent here, there's too much excitement here, there's too much experience here, and it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty much, I think, Either as long as people want to watch it or as long as we want to do it, we'll find some happy medium between those two, you know? By the end of it, we'll all be in wheelchairs and it'll be like the end of the Golden Girls. I can't wait, but I'm not going to cry on this DVD, so don't try to make me. We're all equally involved in, in just doing the best that we can do here and then deliver it out to, to our fans and hope they, uh, hope they enjoy watching as much as we enjoyed making it, you know? The little show that could, huh? Nice. Nice. We're proud of this thing, you know? Good stuff. <laughs> nice. Did y'all see you soon? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Again. Uh, thanks. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Big nice stuff, man. Congrats. Good for you. Good stuff. Right on. Right on. Cool. And you. Oh, you. Yeah. Just so nice. 90 new episodes of Anger Management are coming your way, and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs>